the Thoughty OT podcast. What supports can an autistic adult, or I'll, I'll do the adult part again, but um, and or um, a parent of an autistic child use to reduce sensory things? Like wh- where would th- where could they start? I um, my starting place and what I encourage parents to do as well is do a like assessment of your home. What are, where are the sounds coming from? Where are the smells coming from? And for our home, I keep small kitchen appliances in the garage. So the coffee grinder, the blender, those are in the garage. I close the door behind me to use them. Um, I'm really aware of the cleaners that we use and soaps and detergents, Mm. um, unscented. I, I close the curtains if there's a lot of like bright sunshine or contrasting. Um, sure. I'll try to close the curtains before my son comes in the room, especially in the morning, going from dark to light, that big contrast. Uh, we've replaced fans. It's so like our bathroom fan. We replaced the, the oh, I motor. Hate those. Yeah. It's the ones it's that really connect to him. the lights when you put yes. the light on as well. Yes. That's, uh, and even in the in the community, we keep track of what bathrooms have fans that <laughs> that come on <laughs> with the light switch, um, and that kind of goes along with the assessment thing of of um, doing your due diligence. Uh, I look for um, soft materials, so mm-hmm. replacing anything that has buttons or zippers or feels scratchy, especially oh, yeah. if you have a person who. Um, experiences self-injurious behaviors, making sure that you're Mm not uh, pulling in a pillow that has buttons and zippers, um, that would be dangerous. So um, you can also look at your uh, decor. (laughs) Uh, Maybe you're, you have too many colors and it's visually too much input. Um, You can look at if the, if your child or, the person autistic person has spatial awareness challenges, you know, can you put some cushions on the corners so that they're not Mm. injuring themselves because their spatial awareness, uh, a lot of it just really is being diligent and assessing the environment. And so you'd say that, that, that kind of, cause I, I would agree with you as well. I think, you know, the best course of action is to remove things at the source, you know, you want to remove things before, adding in things that could help yeah. because I feel like that's, you know, if you can remove the sources of the stress, it's better than having the sources Putting of the stress, but also having ways to, ways yeah. to deal with that stress. You yeah. just want to get rid of it first. So there's, yep. it's just not, and maybe not a stressful even, environment. Maybe this isn't the time to run the dishwasher. Yeah. You know, the, that for my son, it's hard for him to eat if the dishwasher is running. So I'll just put on pause and, really like that it's not a big deal um and you know and then in terms of adding things back in uh we have a swing and when my kids stop using it i know it's time to put a different swing attachment up and um for my daughter i use the therapressure brush or lotion and um we talk a therapressure brush, um, they call it the Wilberger protocol, but we don't follow it exactly. But it's kind of like a little silicone bristles It's uh, that fold easily, and it gives some good proprioceptive input. You just do long strokes, like on the arms, legs, or the back. Uh, mm. And she actually will take it with her to school in her pocket and just use it on the palms of her hands. Um, oh, and it, I might need to get of, one of those. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's, it just gives them nice deep pressure. Uh, and it was actually, it was a two different occupational therapists have recommended it, um, at different Mm. one for my son and one for my daughter at different times for different purposes. Uh, but she really seeks that out and, um, lotion for her as well. If she comes home dysregulated that's kind of one of the first tools i'll be like okay let me let's do like a little lotion on your arms and uh co-regulate but uh removing sensory input and then pulling in 
the right sensory input is is so important. We use a lot of uh, cool lights. Um, mm-hmm. So the you know like the galaxy projector lights that has yeah, been really yeah. successful oh, I in love our those home. Things. <laughs> That's I mean, been really I, fun. I pulled this out on on the OTNL podcast. Oh my god, I haven't put my flashy thing on in the background <laughs> like usual. Oh, it's not it's not connected. <laughs> it's good. I've got well, I've got I've got this. I'll put it on in a sec. But I've got this yeah, fiber optic cool. light, which I really love. Uh, I also had this this jellyfish light as well, but cool. I just haven't. I haven't put the batteries in in a while. And I need to get on that because it is like, if I'm like working and I'm just like, I need to have a little bit of a break. I can just yeah. sort of stare at the jellyfish, listen to yeah. my music. <laughs> I think that that's really important. Um, I know the focus is autism, but with ADHD and cause they're, you know, co-occurring so frequently, uh, adding in that, um, that hit of dopamine, <laughs> Um, with the cool lights or the music to stim to, um, uh, sometimes we'll do like a piece of gum or a piece of candy just to get, uh, get us motivated. Um, you know, the body doubling, there's so many, um, tools. And when you look at it like Mm -hmm. tools, uh, it helps us to, to cope and yeah. and be the person that we want to be like nobody wants to be dysregulated um mm-hmm. so if you're looking at sensory input like that it it makes sense yeah i think from um from the kind of the, the autistic adult side i think you know a lot of those things could definitely be transferable um you know whether you're a, a child or an adult you can use stuff like that it's like I recently did a post on oral motor needs and a lot of people didn't even know what they were um, and that they had them. Um, and a lot of people like bite their lips and like, you know, grind their teeth or, you know, snack a lot. That was a big one for me. Yeah. Um, I just wasn't getting that, that oral motor stimulation. So, you know, things like chew- chewing things is quite a yeah. big thing. Yeah. We have um, a collection of, of chewy chew necklaces. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you can do like carrots a lot of and schools from a, from what I've heard, they're not the most like they're not the most um accommodating for that. Like yeah. um you know, they're make... like, oh no, that's a child thing. Like you're not yeah. you know my daughter has heard so many uh rude comments about her chew necklaces. Um so many times. It's terrible. Yeah, and trying to to teach her um how to advocate for why she mm-hmm. needs it, that it, she's no, she's not teething and no, she's not a baby. This is not a baby teething necklace. Like it helps her, um, with sensory input and combat anxiety. Uh, there's the, the advocating is relentless, but that's yeah, what I it's so imagine. important to teach our kids to advocate for themselves Hey up YouTube, hope you have enjoyed this podcast clip so far. And if you have, why not check out the full episode, which you can find on my YouTube channel or on other streaming services like Google, Apple, um, Spotify. You can find it pretty much anywhere you want to. If you have enjoyed this, make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment down below. Even if it's something simple like sending me a heart or an emoji, it really, really does help me with the algorithm. All of my links to my socials, like my daily Instagram blog posts are down in the description. But other than that, I hope you enjoy the rest of this clip because you're not always around them, especially if they go to yes. school, yep. you know, and it's hard, isn't it? Um, it is hard. It's, you know, in, in, in terms of like sensory support for adults, I'd say, you know, common things to use would be sunglasses or like what you were saying about those um, F- FD, FD 41, FL 41, yeah. FL 41, nearly yeah. got it. Um, the things like those can be helpful. I mean, my blue light glasses help they actually help more with, with calming me than eye strain, yeah. but um, I find those quite helpful. There's also I... things like headphones, earbuds, yeah. ear defenders, yeah. um, the D bud, um, earplugs. Yeah, I, I use loops. <laughs> to reduce sensory noise. Similar. Yeah. And uh, also things, uh, 
sensory toys. You know, yeah. it could be things like um, acupressure rings, which I really like. Uh, that you can just put on your finger. You can keep it in your pocket. They're just things that you can just roll up and down your your finger, and it's quite sort of proprioceptive in that sense. Um, there's also uh, compression clothes, which I actually utilized a lot when I was a teenager. Um, like you know, you get those compression clothes for like sports and stuff. Um, I find that a lot of my anxiety comes in through my legs. Like it's the first place that that really starts to become an issue um, when it when I get anxious or, or overloaded. So I used to wear um, compression bottoms like under my my school clothes. Um, that really helped. Um, for a lot of people, I think sometimes <laughs> sometimes people like tight clothing. Sometimes people like loose clothing. And I'm definitely on the, I like the tight clothing side of things. But um, I mean, it could be just some something simple like opting for wearing some stylish joggers, um, some trainers that kind of look a bit bit more formal, um, even, you know, soft softer hoodies, hats. Yeah. You know, there, there could be a lot of things that you could you could use sort of on a daily basis. Hats um, and hoodies and even, are, are one of my staples. Mm-hmm. Just, and even at home, you know, yeah. uh, utilize any flaws that you have to lay on them if you're feeling stressed. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I do. It's like I come home from a speaking event or a hard day and I'll just lay on the, the living room floor and chat to my mom about like uh, my day and stuff. And that really helps doing like stretches and things like yeah, that. Stretching. Um, a lot of people find weighted blankets or weighted uh, toys, plushies, quite helpful for them. Um, it's not something that I like because I, I feel a bit restricted. I like to move around a lot. Um, but I, I've heard that it can be quite helpful for some people. There's this company called Fidget Gem. Uh, Fidget, no, Fidget Gem. I'm combining company names. Fidget <laughs> Bomb. I don't know if they're still going on, but I, I used to chat to their sort of company founder and they, they do these... It's kind of like a, a, a sock for your mattress um, and it provides the pressure through like the tension of the elastic material rather than oh, nice. the weight of weight of the blanket. Um, and you can sort of move around in it and you can like adjust the tightness of it and stuff. And that, that, that has been really helpful for me. I still don't know if they do stuff like that, but it might be worth having a look at that kind of thing. Um, I think the issue was with it is that... Uh, the, the actual product, it, it worked really well, but the problem was um, it kind of looks a bit restrictive mm. and they, they didn't know whether it would kind of get past health checks and stuff because, you know, it is like a basically you kind of binding, in the bed. binding yeah. yourself to the bed a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that could be problematic. Are, yeah, yeah, but exactly. I, but I see the intention. My husband definitely, um, he likes the sheets to be super tight. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of like a, a body sock that is used <laughs> for that proprioceptive input. Um, I can see... Like, like what like Russian children get where they get like swaddled after they get... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I like swaddling for babies. Like that's a common practice. Um, yeah. And from the sensory perspective... Like now we can see like why do babies love to be swaddled? Yeah, yeah. It's not just the the feeling of being in the womb, it's that deep pressure. Mm, and mm. that need doesn't just vanish because mm. they turn into a toddler. Um I mean I'd I'd quite like to go through perhaps some of the things that I use. Um I mean just just for examples, just things that I have about fidget cubes, different things that you can push and click and fiddle with if you if you're feeling like you need to do some for your hands there's the typical uh fidget spinners of course i've gone for a very gothic style school fidget spinner <laughs> i got from thailand um and there's also this if i can i find um like massage and deep pressure and vibration really helpful so i have this sort of uh this foot massager that i have under my desk that i can nice put my foot on and it it just vibrates and it's got like these rolly things that you can sort of use 
just having that under my desk yeah sure it kind of resonates throughout the house a little bit but <laughs> but if it helps you Which... complete the task yeah then that's good or, or simply having a blanket that i can just mm-hmm. kind of put over myself and just you know just stuff like that little things like that it, it kind of it adds up um it does and especially if you you struggle like focusing and stuff just having different things that you can do to kind of modify your center environment on the daily is quite it's quite useful um yeah and then it's lastly important. there's noise cancelling headphones of course and music yeah that's a big one i think it's important just to note that uh especially if you are assessing um somebody else's sensory needs like as mm-hmm. a parent um, that it's not going to be the exact same every day and sure. just recognizing that um, maybe yesterday they needed to spin, but today they need uh, to run. Like just mm-hmm. recognizing that it's not like they talk a lot about sensory diet. And I think that that's something that is important to be added to the conversation is that, um, and maybe their capacity for it changes day to day. Uh, what mm-hmm. they could tolerate yesterday is intolerable today. Uh, oh, totally. It, it's just so just important like to recognize that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the the compiling effect of mm-hmm. um, appointments and demands placed yeah. upon them, uh, just recognizing that, that it's not the same every day. 